I'm Andrew, and this is NPMC's Top 5 of the Week. Good morning, church family. I hope you're ready to worship with us this morning. I want you to know that we have been praying for you, and we cannot wait to get back again together, whenever that may be. After this morning's top five, Pastor Matt will be leading us in some songs, so be sure to sing loud and strong as we worship our great God together. After worship, Pastor Dave will be bringing us the Word, so be sure to have your Bibles and smart devices handy as we open God's Word together. Now, here's your top five of the week. Oh, I'm starting to forget what you guys look like. It's been so long since we've seen a lot of you and we miss you dearly here at the church. So if you could do us a favor and take a picture of your family, like right now as you're, as you're watching this, like what are you doing? Get up and take the photo right now and send it to this email and we will play it before the announcements of next week's service. Pastor Dave's Wednesday night class is still going live at 6.30. The only difference is you're going to have to watch it just like you're watching me, watching me, watching me, whether that be through Facebook, YouTube, or the church app. Also, Pastor Matt will be sending out an email on how you can also watch it on the YouTube channel. Youth, we are meeting via Zoom at 745 on Wednesdays, and I hope you make it a plan to be there because I get to see your faces, but you guys get to see this. Oh yeah. Guys, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to contact me. Also, Explorers, you guys are meeting Wednesdays at 6 and also Thursdays at 3. And Elena is doing this super duper awesome crazy thing. On Fridays at 11 o'clock, she's playing bingo. And if you want to be a part of it, be sure to message her through Facebook Messenger to reserve your spot. I know times are difficult for a lot of you out there, but us as a staff just want to say thank you so much for your generosity. Here are a couple ways you can continually give. The first is online at this link below. The second is you can send the checks to the church, but make sure you send it to the P.O. box and not the church's address here, because we ain't got no mailbox here. The third is you can download the NPMC Church app, and the fourth is you can text my NPMC to this number below. We just want to say thank you again so much for your generosity. Free hugs, anybody? Free hugs? Free hugs? Oh, there's nobody here. Oh yeah, I forgot, we're practicing social distancing. I am definitely getting tired of social distancing because I am ready to give people hugs again. Man, oh man, it is difficult for when I come to church and I see Pastor Matt or Elena or Pastor Dave to not give them a big old squeeze. And I can't wait to do that again and I believe we will be able to do that again. But guys, in order to do that sooner rather than later, we need to abide by what the government is saying. So we need to practice social distancing. Guys, because I can't wait to get back to church again to give hugs to everybody. If you have any questions about any of the announcements that I had mentioned, please call the church office. Hello, New Paris Missionary Church. Thanks for watching NPMC's Top 5 of the Week. Have a great day and be blessed. Well, good morning, church family. Glad you're all here with us this morning. Hey, guess what? Last week we had the team, and this week we have the team again, except Tara is with us instead of Gail, which is great to have Tara here, and Cody came back, Jordan came back, and Dan came back, Yay. and I'm, I'm always here. So uh, glad that you're here with us this morning, and as we enter into worship, we have been waiting to worship with you today, and let's just sing these words together and lift up the name of the Lord together as we sing this. We've waited for this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're seeing. Open up 
the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our brains your presence in this place your glory on our face we're looking to the sky descending like a cloud you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Sing that again. Open up the heavens. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. Show us, Lord. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Sing it out with all your heart this morning. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory. It up. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river. that's your prayer this morning. I know it's our prayer that God, you would show us your glory. And even in the midst of all that we're facing, glory belongs to the Lord alone. And as we continue to sing, let's just praise him with all of our hearts. Before the world was made, before you spoke into me, you were the king of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were. And now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. So I could praise your great and matchless name All my days, all my days So let my whole life be a blazing offering A life that shouts and sings The greatness of our King Glory to God, glory to God
take our lives, Lord. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. deserve all the praise and honor and glory. And God, in this time, we need you more than anything. And we come to you and we confess our sins. God, we need you in these days. Let's sing this together. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here. I find my rest and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart sing it out with all your heart Lord I need Jesus, 
back to last week thinking of the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross but then the story didn't end there because three days later you rose from the dead and God we're casting our mind to Calvary where you bled and you died for us but God we will praise your name above every other name above every other situation that's why we're going to sing this song together my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance here by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone lift it up with all your heart Third, 
shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face he shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will the story didn't end there is amazing and help us not to forget that God that we're not bound to our sin because you've forgiven us and God we will praise you for all eternity one day we will be with you but God until that time we will worship you with all of our hearts here on the earth God, as Pastor Dave comes, I pray that you would give him boldness, that you would speak through him in a way that each one of us needs to hear today. God, thank you for him. Thank you for his heart and the leadership that he brings to our church. God, 
God, again, thank you for the time we've had to worship you this morning. And we love you, and we look to you now. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus that everyone prayed. And all God's people said, amen. And now, here's Pastor Dave with this, this week's message. Well, good morning. I hope that you're settled in today and ready to go. I hope that you have your Bibles open or your iPads or whatever it is that you're using today as we look into God's Word. I got to tell you, I was so excited over these last uh, five weeks or so as we spent a lot of time looking into those last hours of Jesus' life and as we looked at the resurrection of Christ and, and what that means to you and to me. I got to tell you, this was an exciting time. One of the things I wish that we could have done, though, I wish that we could have been together to celebrate here at the church, but you have found unique ways to, to make what is not so comfortable something that is at least tolerable. And I've got to tell you, I'm excited for you. This morning, we're going to jump back into what we were studying prior to uh, these last five weeks. We've been looking at the book of 2 Timothy, and that's where we stopped as we prepared for uh, Easter season and those five weeks that we spent looking into Jesus' life. And so today, we're going to jump back into that today, and I hope that you have your Bibles and you're ready to go with us today. I want to just give you a little clarity real quick. Uh, I'm going to read to you from the New American Standard as we begin today, uh, just because I think that it gives us a little bit more understanding rather than what the NIV does, and so we're going to use that as our context today, but I hope that you'll plan to just uh, stay the course and follow along with me today. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to start today in 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 20, and this is what it says. Now, in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Now flee from your youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. This morning, I just want to take some time for us to just spend some time going before the Lord and asking him to speak into our lives today as he continues to guide us as Paul is speaking to young Timothy about pursuing this thing that we call righteousness, pursuing the things of God as one who's ministering to other people. So would you bow your heads today and let's seek the Lord today. Father, we're so very grateful so very thankful, Lord, for the way your word draws us into a relationship with you. That it gives, gives us truth each and every time that we open it. That it never changes, that it's always the same. Father, I pray that this will be more than just simple instructions with, with a thought at the end. I pray, Lord, that through looking into your word this morning, Lord, that we would, we would gravitate, that we would long for more of you that you might shape our lives, Lord, in such a way that, Lord, that we would be useful for the work of your kingdom here on earth. Father, we love you today. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity now. So, Lord, speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, in a way that only you can. And, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory for who you are. And it's in your precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, I think about these vessels, and it, and it reminds me a little bit of, of what we have going on at home. Um, my wife and I, it's unique, and maybe you have the same kind of situation in your house, too. Um, there's a chair that's my chair. There's a chair that's her chair. We even have cups that are, it's our own cups. They look identical. In fact, they're almost identical in shape and size. But my wife can tell the difference between my cup and her cup. And, and here's the funny thing. Uh, my wife has told me a couple times. She said, honey, I, I don't want to make a big deal of it, but, but you've got my cup. And, and I have sometimes done the same thing to her as well. But I have to tell you this morning that it, it is not true when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, he has, he has the right over every vessel. It's not just some vessels. He has the right over every vessel that he picks up and that he chooses to use. So we, we may have our own thing and we may have our own cups, but God, these are all his vessels and he uses them as he pleases. And so this morning, what I want us to look at together today is this picture. 
This picture that we're going to look at today is what Paul has been giving us up to this t- point all along. In fact, if you remember back as we started this time together in 2 Timothy, there are a lot of pictures that, that Paul gives. He gives us a picture of a soldier, of an athlete, of a farmer. Uh, the last time that we looked at 2 Timothy, we looked at a, 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 a worker. And next week, we're going to talk about a servant. But today, we're going to talk about a vessel. And the first thing I want us to look at today as we see these three Ps that we're going to talk about, the first thing we're going to see is the picture. And, and the picture is, is a picture of a vessel that Paul's using. In fact, Paul uses the same word vessel to describe what happened as he was converted on the road to Damascus. In fact, you might remember back when, when I said last week that, that Paul was floored in this experience with Jesus Christ, that he, he was brought to his knees to make a decision for who Jesus would be in his life. And after that took place, God had said to Ananias, I want you to go to Paul. I want you to go and tend to him. And you can imagine how Ananias must have felt that, you know, this is Paul. This is a man who has been ruthless and he has been out to terrorize God's people. But you got to remember that God says that, that Paul is my chosen vessel to bear my name to the Gentiles, he says. So this picture here is not hard for us to grasp or to understand. Even the picture of the large house is quite simple for us to gather as well. It's not just, it's not just a big place. It's not just a big building. I, I think of a, of a great house or a big house. I think of the White House, a place that I've never been inside of. And, and every time I've gone, we've either been unable to go or it was closed for visitors. So I've always longed to see the inside of it. I'm, I'm just amazed at the structure of it all. But what we understand is that when God's talking about a large house, what he's talking about is the church of God. He's talking about his people. That's what the great house is. And unless God builds a house, he says, then, then it, is, it is not useful. It, it is a foundation that he has built. Now, Peter even describes this as well. And Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. He says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. So if it's a great house, if the great house is the church of God, then the master of that house, we would understand as well, is none other than Jesus Christ. So Paul has been speaking in verse 19. He he describes this foundation or this architecture. But then he goes on from, from describing the architecture of the house. He goes on from there to describe the content of the house. And so we need to understand that what he's talking about then in verse 20 are are the descriptions of two different groups of people. He's talking about the good workers and the bad workers. He's talking about these two vessels. And and, and, and as you look at it together with me this morning, you're going to find that this is what he's describing to Timothy that he wants him to be. Timothy, you have the opportunity. You can be one type of worker or you can be another type. You can be a good worker for the kingdom or you can be a poor worker for the kingdom. So in verse 20, he gives us the picture. In verse 21, he moves into this thing that we're going to call today the privilege. Look at verse 21 with me again. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter, talking about the bad, the the wrong workers. He says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, for good purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So the privilege is, is to be a vessel that is honor, of honorable use, not of poor use. There's nothing difficult about this either. But let me stop and ask you a question this morning. Have you ever been one who's never received any type of award? Uh, some of you may have received honorable mention. You walked across the platform, you received a, a piece of paper that had your name on it, and people applauded your name. If you're 20 years old or younger, you probably have received a participation trophy, which, by the way, I'm totally against, but that's another thing for another time. But I have really good news for you today. There is a, there is a reward that you have, that a reward that I have, if we, if we are in Christ Jesus, that we receive a reward, and it's, a, it's his honor list, if you want to call it that. It is, it is that thing that he publishes. And the most incredible thing about his honor list is that some of the most unexpected people are on that list, from, from an earthly perspective, that is. 
Let me just give you an example of one right now. Jesus, before he comes into the shadow of the cross, is in, is in Bethany, and he's at the house of Simon the leper. And while he's there, in, in Mark chapter 14, verse 9, it describes this to us. Later on in John, we find out that this is Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary is the, also the sister of Lazarus. Mary is at the feet of Jesus, and she takes this alabaster jar, and she uses the perfume, that, this very expensive perfume, and she pours it over Jesus' head. Now, in the midst of that, you, you get a sense that this is honoring from the standpoint of what Jesus sees. But as you look at the people that are sitting around, you find out real quickly they're not so encouraged by it. In fact, what we find out is they're discouraged. They're wondering, why would this, this, this young girl take this expensive perfume and pour it over Jesus' head? It could be used for something so much better than that. In fact, that's the words that we hear in other passages in the, in the Gospels. But what we find is, is that in verse 9 of chapter 14 of Mark, Jesus says this. He says, truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached, throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So what did she do? Jesus says that she has prepared me for my burial. She took this, this what was costly, this, this family treasure, and, and, and this, this type of perfume, this oil, was used for many things, but primarily for two things. One, it would, been a, it would be something that she would use as she was preparing for marriage, to, to, to prepare herself as, as to make herself look more inviting to her future husband. But most of the time, it would be something that somebody would purchase for something that would happen later on. That would be their own death. And so what we find here is that what she is doing, she has consecrated herself. She has sacrificed her future to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, anywhere you are in the world, this story will be told. She made the list. She became a part of the honorable list that we talk about, of honorable service to Jesus Christ. And I think one of the mistakes that we sometimes make is this, is that we think that this honorable service list is something that is given to us publicly. It's something that we expect to be announced in a public setting. No, the God who sees that which we do in secret will reward us openly someday. In fact, let me just tell you, remember this, we will, he will not forget the secret things that you do. Sometimes we think about the things we do in our lives and we think, I don't know if that has great meaning or not. I'm not sure that it matters to anybody else. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this morning, that your prayer life honors God. Your, even the things that you do in your prayer closet matters to the kingdom of God. It changes things. Those who, put, those who, who are put under your care matter. That's how we get on the honors list. He has his own honors list for you and for me. He is in the business of setting you and me apart to make us part of this honors list. Those things that we talk about like unseen engagements, those moments in time when you're put in a position that is unexpected and it's in those moments that God chooses to use you for a purpose that you and I, because of what we say, because of our actions toward other people, gives honor and glory to God and that puts us on his list. It's the things that we do to honor him. Those simple tasks that seem so meaningless to God, they're so very important. And there is no greater privilege than to be a part of that list. And he says to Timothy, he says to all those who are in ministry, he says to all those Christian workers, what a privilege that it is to be on the honors list. So what, so what does it involve? Well, the text tells us that. There's just a couple things to think about here. The first is this. He says that the first thing is, in verse 21, that we are set apart. <laughs> and as soon as I read this passage of Scripture, it reminded me of what I thought when I was younger about setting something that I had had, that I had cherished, that I wanted to set apart as well. When I was about 13 years old, my mom and dad bought me a 12-speed bicycle. It was this beautiful gold bike. I, I, it was brand new. It was, just, it was just gorgeous. 
And now all my friends thought it was really cool as well. And I'd only had it for a day. And, and that evening, my friend and I, we were, we were going back to our houses and he lived right beside of me and it started to rain. And I was saying to myself, I don't have a shed. I don't have a place to put it. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to get my bike wet. So, so how do I maintain this beautiful thing that has been given to me? And my friend said to me, he said, hey, why don't you just take it in the house? And I said, I think it's a good idea. I'll take it in. And, and I had a perfect spot for it as well. In my mom's kitchen, in the dining area, she had this cabinet. And in this cabinet were all these special ornaments and glass and plates that she had for special occasions. They were special things. And I thought, what a better place to put my bike than right there beside of the cabinet where mom kept all of her special things. Well, for some of you, you already know where this story is going because at the, as soon as my mom came home and she walked in the kitchen and she walked through the dining room, she looks and she says, what is the bike doing there? And I said, mom, it's special. I don't want it to get wet. Well, it ended up in my bedroom for a little while. But at the end of the day, here's what I'm saying. There has to be a place that had to be set apart for special things. And if you are in Christ, if you are in Christ Jesus, then God sets you apart. For what reason? From all that you once were to all that you are now in him. In order for, and, and, it's, and there's a reason why he sets you apart, in order that you be all that he desires you to be, to be a part of that which is holy. And Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. And here it is, holy and pleasing to God. He says, this is your true and proper worship. So the first thing that we need to be reminded of is that it's a special place that he puts us. There's this privilege in that. And then the second thing that he tells us about this privilege is that it is useful to the master. So, so first we're set apart, and now he says you, you can be useful to the, to the master. What a privilege it is, brothers and sisters, to be useful to the master's work. I wonder to myself, how many of you find yourself in a place where you'd say, I either feel useful or maybe you feel useless. And I, don't want, and I want to encourage you today to know one thing in your heart. Don't let Satan, don't let the devil tell you that you are useless. He has set you apart. He has set me apart and has given you gifts. He's given all of us gifts and put you in a place and has given you an assignment at just the right moment in time to do his work. Don't worry about what everybody else's assignment is. You know, that's the thing I, I worry so much about the, the, the church as a whole. Sometimes we get wrapped up into positions and titles and all those things. And I just want you to know, it's not about how big the assignment is. It's about the purpose behind it, that you were set apart for a specific thing, for the work of God. There is no assignment too big and there is no assignment that is too small for him. Your assignment, brothers and sisters in Christ, is special. And it doesn't matter whether or not you're vacuuming the carpet or whether you're preaching the word of God. Each of us have been given a gift to use for his glory. And only Satan can take that away from you if you allow it. So second, it has to, we, we can be, it's a privilege to be useful to the master. The third thing is this, that we're prepared for every good work. What a privilege it is to be prepared for every good work. Verse 21 again says that as well. And let me just tell you, what you and I really can look at ourselves as is utility workers, as utility players. In baseball, there are certain people who are utility players. That means that they play whatever position that you give them. And that's exactly how we need to look at being a part of the family of God. It does not matter what position it is. It's whatever position that he wants to use us in. So whatever Whatever the number is, whatever the, the jersey number is, I'll wear whatever jersey number there is. I will play the infield, the outfield, I'll play catcher. I will be wherever you want me to be because I want to be on his team. And brothers and sisters, that is, is what we ought to all think about. To promote himself, to promote him, and to promote the gospel message. And Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, be a part of that which is good because it can set you apart. You can be part of, of something that, that is a part of a good work, a part of a, something that it allows you to be useful to the master. But remember, 
And you might have thought about this when you were reading verse 21. It looks like I skipped over something. And I did that on purpose for a reason. Because all these things, being prepared for every good work, being useful for the master, to be set, it up, to be set apart, all is connected to one very important thing. If you look back at verse 21, the very first thing he says is this. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. The, the, this promise or this privilege is conditioned upon us cleansing ourselves. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, wait a minute, Pastor Dave. I thought that it was what Jesus did. I thought that the cleansing power came from him. And yes, it does. He is the one who cleanses us. But you and I have a part in it. In other words, let me just describe it to you like this. To become like Jesus, we don't just simply step back and, and wait for God to do something in a vacuum. There's a responsibility that you and I have. And let me just give you a couple examples so that we're really clear about what that looks like and what that means. We must engage in saying what is wrong and also saying yes to what is right. So, so sometimes we have to say no. Sometimes we have to say no to that which is wrong. And sometimes that is how we cleanse ourselves, that we keep leading ourselves down the path that leads to Jesus Christ. So in those moments when, when we know that it's wrong, we have to say no. And in those moments when we know that it is right, we have to say yes. Not only that, but something else that I thought about that was important too is being in a fellowship with God's people. In moments like this, it's really hard to gather here and being a part of what seems so normal to us. But it doesn't change the fact that we are not to be isolated from God's people. God did not create us to be that way. Uh, the third thing that I, talk about, I thought about was this, seeking God in prayer. Rather than saying, no, God, I don't need advice and I don't need help. I'll just do it on my own. It's not about us on our own. It is with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times we find ourselves in those moments when we have such hard decisions to make. And oftentimes I ask people, have you prayed about it? And, and automatically the first thing I hear is, well, no, I haven't prayed. Well, why not? It should be the very first thing that we do. It's a vital process. To, to be cleansed. This cleansing thing is so important. Uh, have you ever had a cleansing? I, I remember the first time when I was at Bethel College, there was this, this lady that was in our class, and, and we were, it, was, it was one of our breaks, and we were eating, and, and I think somebody had popped some popcorn or something like that, and they asked her, they said, hey, do you want some popcorn? And she said, no, no, I'm doing a cleansing. I, I have a toxic flush. And I had no idea what that meant. But as I stop and I think about it, it sounds really good. I mean, if it's something that is helpful, then we should do it. So when it comes to this relationship with, with Jesus Christ, this cleansing that we must do has to be something that we are always working on, that we're in a constant cleansing. Have you ever had a spiritual cleansing? Uh, we need one. We all need it. We need it every day. And cleansing from what Paul has described contrary to, to what he was talking about with those who have fallen away is what's crucial here. He says, you know, those who have fallen away, those that we talked about in, in, in Ephesus, those people who were once following and leading and preaching and now have gone astray, he says, those people have gone astray because they haven't had a cleansing. They haven't been working this out in their life. They knew the truth, they experienced Jesus, but now they're doing their own thing. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how do I cleanse myself? Well, here's a couple things to think about. It's our mind, for one. We have to cleanse our thoughts about false teachings. Those things that we allow to penetrate our thoughts to become truth when it's not the word of God. Or maybe it's our hearts. That, that it's our hearts that, that, that move us away from that which is false attractions. Those things that, that our heart longs for, but we know is wrong and ought not to engage in. And for some of us, we found ourselves in those places where, where our heart says one thing, but the word of God says something else. And you know, at the end of the day, the heart will constantly deceive you. It's the word of God that you can trust. And it might just be our will as well. That, that, that we have to have a cleansing when it comes to our will so that we don't find ourselves with these, these false agendas. That, that why do we do what we do? Whose will am I in? Am I in my will or am I in God's will? We have to see those things. 
And we have to constantly be cleansing those things and allowing the Lord to cleanse those things in our lives every day. So, what a privilege. And the third thing is something that I want to spend some quality time on this morning, and that is what we pursue. What is it that you pursue? In verse 22, he speaks about this. What is it that you pursue? What is it that you're pursuing right now in your own life? Well, Paul tells us, young Timothy, the one thing that you must pursue in everything that you do is righteousness. And Paul is really answering what the practical steps are for you and for me to take if we're going to be useful to the master. If we're going to, if we're going to finish the race well, if we're going to finish out the race that has been marked for us. He says, this is a lifetime race. This, this never stops, Timothy. You're always going to be in this race. How do you do that? Well, it's going to involve some things. And if you look at verse 22, he talks about these three things. There are things that you have to run from. There are things that you have to run after. And there are, there are those that you need to run with. And I want to talk about those real quick because in the words of the great theologian, Forrest Gump, he says, I just kept running. And for you and for me, we got to keep running. That this is not just about something that we do for a short period of time in our lives and then we're all set. He says, there are things that you need to run from. There's things that you need to run after. And there are some that you need to run with. Let me talk about those real quick. So the first thing is, what is it that you need to run from? Well, let me just stop real quick to say that the Bible speaks about this. It says that you need to flee from your youthful lust. In verse 22, he talks about that. Well, well what are they? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we don't know the age of Timothy. Some say that he could have been even 40 years old. And, and, and by the way, Paul describes Timothy as young Timothy. So if you're 60 years old, you're the new 40. And for me, I'm 50. That means I really should feel like I'm 30. That's good news for all of us today. But here's what we do know. He says those youthful lusts, Timothy, that you pursued, you need to run from those things. Those things that, that were the wrong types of pleasure, you need to run from those things. Things like being number one and feeling like that this story, this life is all about you and that as long as it comforts you, as long as you get what you want, as long as you're at the top of the hill, as long as you're at the peak, you're number one. Paul says, no, it's not about that. It's not about the things that you acquire in this life. It's not about the material things. It's not about that either. It's about that which brings glory to God. And let me just encourage some of you today because you need to hear this. When sin comes up in your life, there's one thing that you must do first and foremost before you do anything else. You need to make a run for it. Now, you're, I know what you're thinking. Pastor, I mean, isn't the first thing that we need to do is pray? I mean, uh, don't, can't we just sit down and discuss it and talk about it? Well, let me just say to you that if the word of God says it's wrong, then you don't have to pray about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't pray and ask the Lord for, to help you to get through it. But you don't have to stay there and pray through it. If it's wrong, you need to run from it. Let me give you an example of that. When Joseph, in the Old Testament, when Joseph was, was in the house of Potiphar and Potiphar's wife was trying to engage with Joseph, you remember what Joseph did? He constantly tried to move and shake and get away. And one day what he simply does is he makes a dart run for it. And at the end of the day, that's how you and I must react. We have to run from it. We, we should pray. I'm not saying you shouldn't pray. But if, if the word of God is black and white and it says thou shalt not, it doesn't mean that you sit around and you discuss it and you think about it. Why pray about something that you know that God has already said is wrong? You gotta run from those things. And here's the second thing. You gotta run after certain things. And what is it that we should run after? And I think that's important for all of us. Well, let me just tell you, he tells us that. He tells us in verse 22 that we should run after righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness, what is the right thing to do? Not keep on sinning. He says you need to pursue certain things. You need to run after certain things. And he says that, that an honorable vessel pursues after the right things. What are the right things? Well, here they are. He calls them out. He says it's faith. Love and peace. What is faith? Faith is taking God at his word. So, so the first thing that you and I need to pursue is the word of God, the truth. What does God say? And, the, and faith is not blind faith. 
There's certain things that we don't have answers for. There's certain things that we don't understand. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we have enough in God's word to lead us and to guide us through this life. And whatever his word says, we need to have faith to trust it. Take God at his word. And love, the second thing, if we love one another, God abides in us, he says. So, so our connection, the way that we love other people is directly connected to how we relate with God. The way that you love the unlovable, the way that you care for other people is a direct way in which we relate with Jesus Christ, our relationship with him. He says, you gotta pursue, you gotta run after those things. And peace, the third thing, not being unsettled and, and, and swerving from, from, the, from the godless babble teaching that you hear. He says, don't get caught up into that junk. He says, you got to have peace. You got to have a peace that passes all understanding. And your peace is found in your relationship. Peace is found in the word of God that gives you hope and structure and direction for your life. There's a peace that you get from that. And here's something that even in our time right now, as we're going through such a difficult time, that he says, you not, not only is there something that you have to run after, there's also something you got to run with. And it doesn't take place on our own. And let me just make that very clear. That's the devil lying to you. When he tells you that this is just about you, that you don't need anybody else, that you don't need help, let me tell you, that's a lie straight from the, from the pit of hell. No, it's a great house. It's a great house. And in verse 19, he talks about with those who are called on the Lord, for those who are called on the Lord, what do we do? We run with those who can help us lead us through this world, through this life. You know, there is no question that God puts us into places, difficult places, to speak to people who are in darkness. But you have to also find yourself being uh, in a relationship and traveling the same path with people who are like-minded like you. I can often tell a person the type of person they are by the people that they hang around with. And if you don't have people in your life who are pursuing Jesus Christ, who are pursuing righteousness, who are pursuing the, the things of God, then let me tell you, you are gonna find yourself pursuing the wrong things. The people that you pray with, the people that you help and the people that help you, the people that you gather with and you worship with. Let me say to you that I know that it's different, that you're gathered together in your homes or wherever you are today and you're with your family and you're used to being around the entire congregation. But let me tell you, it's important that you spend time in praise with one another, that you're singing together, that you're listening together, that you all are going down the same path together. Even when we can't be here, we're still going the same direction. It's the reason why it's so important that we stay connected. It's the reason why it's so important that we don't lose sight of what is most important during this difficult, difficult season. So there's the picture, there's the privilege, and there's the pursuit or, or pursuing. And this morning, I just want to encourage you that I am so grateful today that I don't have to do it alone. I'm so grateful that you don't have to do it alone. I'm so grateful that he calls us to something bigger than ourselves. And in a day like today, and in a season like this season, it is so important that you really get a grip. As Paul's saying to young Timothy, Timothy, there are many people who came along who sought after the right things, and they kind of got mixed up. They kind of lost their way, and there's reasons for that. And there are vessels. There are good vessels and bad vessels. And, and where the distinction comes is to what you pursue, what you see as the privilege, what you see as the opportunity to be found faithful. And it doesn't just happen accidentally. It's because of your relationship. It's your relationship with God. It's your relationship with others. And when you do those things, you and me, we make the honor list. Not for our, own, or for our own pride, not for our own good, but that we might look and lay it all back down at the feet of the Lord and be thankful that he chose to use us. And our only response is, will I be found obedient to follow him, to trust him, to pursue after him, 
to keep on running, to keep on trusting, and to find people who I will run with in this story of life. What a tragedy it would be if the question was asked to you, who are you running toward Jesus with? To say that you have nobody is such a tragedy. I pray that you find people that you're mentoring. I pray that you find people who are mentoring you. You always should have somebody on each side of the equation. There should always be somebody that you're mentoring. There should always be somebody who's mentoring you. And I pray that that finds you in a place where you are growing and learning and trusting him more and more every day. This morning I pray that God uses this opportunity, the the word of God to speak into your heart, to help you to see differently the way that you pursue life, the way that you trust, the way that you see yourself as a vessel that is just simply used by God for whatever purpose he might have in mind. Because it's simply a privilege, isn't it? Well, let me pray for you. Father, this morning, how grateful we are. Lord, we, we didn't deserve it. Lord, we, we haven't earned it. We, haven't, we, had, we don't have the right last name or the right skin color. None of that stuff matters. Father, you've asked us to be obedient, to trust you, to be found faithful, to allow your word to change us from the inside out to pursue righteousness instead of our own agendas. Father, what what a privilege it is to be a part of the family of God, to be a part of the the house of God, to have the master who's our father, who has our very best interests in mind. Lord, I pray that each and every day that you would use us, that you would allow opportunities for us to engage in opportunities, Lord, that is meaningful for the kingdom of God. And that, Father, that we might have the courage to be obedient, to be found faithful in those moments. Lord, we are so grateful to you. We love you today. And we ask that you use us in a way that in, in which you, only you can for your kingdom. So, Father, it's in your precious and in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Sing that again My hope is built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ the Lord, cornerstone Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his it up.
in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all and God thank you that you are our stronghold God, that even when we face the storms of life, God, you are our unshakable hope. The one that we can turn to, an ever-present help in time of trouble. God, as we go about our week this week, may we look to you in everything that we face, in the decisions that we have to make. And God, above it all, may we be the hands and feet of Jesus to those around us. Thank you for the time we've had to worship you this morning. God, thank you for the word that Pastor Dave brought. Now take us from this place that we may worship you in everything that we do. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus that everyone said, Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. We'll see you next week.